For this tutorial, I'm going to run through a couple helpful tips for creating and controlling dummy bots. Dummy bots are really helpful in a couple ways. For example, if you need to test how a rule affects a player, but you can't get any players to help test for you, sometimes you can just use a dummy bot as a stand-in. Also, the actual bots that uh, Blizzard programmed are very limited. You can't add them to any game mode that's not available in Quick Play. Uh, this means they won't be able to spawn in elimination game modes, team deathmatch game modes, or anything like that. Uh, and Blizzard's bots also only give you a small selection of heroes to choose from. But with dummy bots, you can use any hero in any game mode. It's pretty handy and made my game modes like Zombies, the Dungeons, and the newly released Mass Effect game mode possible. Creating a dummy bot is as simple as using the Create Dummy Bot action. Here you can select the bot's hero, team, slot, position, and the direction they're facing when they spawn. For right now, I'll create a Reinhardt bot on the enemy team for demonstration. You must select a team for the bot to spawn on, otherwise it will not be created. And for the slot, you can use a value of negative 1 through 11. Using negative 1 will put the bot in the first available slot. If there is no available slot, then the bot will not spawn. If you specify a slot number and there's already a bot in that slot, the new bot will replace the current one. It will not, however, replace a player. And remember that the first player slot on any team is 0, not 1. The position can be any vector, such as the position of a player, or maybe a vector that you set where your camera's at. And the facing can be a direction vector that your bot will face when they spawn. And I'll cover direction vectors a little more later on. So I just made a condition for this rule for whenever I press interact. It'll create a Reinhardt dummy bot at my location on team 2 on the first available slot. And I don't have a specific uh, direction set for facing, but that's okay. So if I just press F, there we are. We have a Reinhardt dummy bot, and it is as if there were a player right here uh, who had selected Reinhardt. It just doesn't have any programming, so it just stands there like a player that's AFK. So making a dummy bot perform actions is actually extremely simple. In fact, most of the tools to control dummy bots were actually available before they were even added to the workshop when all you could do was control a regular player. So for this demonstration, I'll just have my Reinhardt bot mimic my actions. I'll make a rule that makes this Reinhardt bot fire his primary attack whenever I do. For this specific instance, I'll have this rule target each player on Team 1. The condition will be when I, the event player, presses primary fire. The action will then force Reinhardt to do the same. There are a couple ways to select the right target and it all depends on how you have your game set up. You could target any player on Team 2. You could target any player on Team 2 who is playing Reinhardt, but if you have multiple Reinhardts and you only want one to be targeted, you could target a player in a specific slot on Team 2. For this demonstration, I'm just going to do any player on Reinhardt. So now, once I press primary fire, Reinhardt bot will do the same. I'll make a couple more rules for secondary fire, jump, crouch, ability 1, ability 2, and ultimate. So I have all these rules drawn out now. Um, the only different ones are the secondary and crouch ones, because with the primary fire, at least with Reinhardt, when you press primary, all he needs to do is press it. But with the secondary, that's Reinhardt's shield, you actually have to hold it down. So this one, whenever you hold secondary, he starts holding secondary, and then when you're not holding secondary, he stops holding secondary. And the same goes for crouch. So I can just demonstrate this here. I chose Reinhardt as well, just for the sake of mirroring it, but it would work with any other hero right now. Um, if I left click, <laughs> Reinhardt also left clicks. If I hold my shield, Reinhardt does the same. Whenever I fire strike or charge, if I crouch, he crouches. And whenever I alt, he does the same. 
Let's give the bot a little more autonomy. Instead of my actions controlling him, let's give him some other conditions that will cause him to perform actions. I'll start by making the bot walk or adjusting its throttle. Whenever manipulating a player's throttle, you can either use start forcing throttle or start throttle in direction. Simply forcing the throttle gives you the option to set a direction with some combination of forward, backward, and sideways. And this will remain unchanged unless you cancel the throttle or add a new throttle with another action. Forcing the throttle in a direction is helpful because you set a position to walk towards and it can reevaluate. Meaning if the player is somehow relocated from their path, the direction that they're walking will change towards the goal position. Note that both types of throttle have their own stop command. Using stop forcing throttle will not stop a directional throttle and stop throttle in direction will not stop a forcing throttle. Keep that in mind if you're ever using a combination of the two. For right now, I'm just going to set the dummy bot to walk forward when there are no players near it. I'll set the minimum forward throttle to 1, and that's all I need to change with that. And then for the condition, I will check to see if the count of the players within radius of the event player with a radius of 2 meters around the bot equals 0. So this just checks to see if there's any players on Team 1 within 2 meters of the bot. So now Reinhardt will walk forward if no one is near him, but he only walks forward. Obviously we need him to walk towards other players. We could use Start Forcing Throttle in Direction and make the direction towards a player, but if he's facing the player, walking forward will always move him towards the correct direction anyway. So instead we'll keep him forcing his throttle forward and have him change direction by changing the direction he's facing. So whenever the bot is alive, meaning they have spawned in, I'll use start facing and this will reevaluate where the goal position is so it's great for making bots lock on to moving positions such as players. So here we will need to use a directional vector. The best way to visualize a directional vector is to think of the stasis ability in Breath of the Wild. You can adjust where Link is and where you hit the object in order to change the directional vector in which the object will fly after the stasis ends. There are a couple directional vectors that are available to use already, such as facing direction of, which is just the direction a specified player is facing. But for this we're going to have to make our own. We'll use direction towards, with this, we'll have to define a start position and an end position, and the vector will be the resulting direction from start to end. So for this, the start position will be the eye position of the bot, and the end position will be the eye position of the closest player. And for more information on selecting the closest player to the bot, check out my tutorial on arrays. Another thing we can edit is the turn rate, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just the speed at which the bot will turn to face where he's supposed to be facing. 100 is fairly decent. It might take a bit for him to turn around if you are behind him. If you want him to aim super fast, I usually go for about 500. Um, for a Widowmaker, she'll have complete aimbot. So if you're within line of sight and she shoots, you'll definitely get hit. So if you want to turn down, if you want to be able to dodge your bot, you might want to just turn down the turn rate. And then for our reevaluation, this is just if you want the position where they're looking to reevaluate. So if you set it to none, they'll stay looking in that position until another command changes where they're looking. If you set it to reevaluate to direction and turn rate, it will keep checking to where it needs to look at. So now our bot moves forward and changes its direction to the nearest player. Let's make it attack if there's a player nearby. Similar to before, I'll check to see if a player is nearby. If that's met, then I'll make the bot hold primary fire. And then in another rule, I'll do the reverse so it stops attacking when there are no players nearby. So if I spawn my Reinhardt bot here, it'll start following me and presumably attacking me, but I'll get away from it. As you can see, it's adjusting its direction to look at me. 
and when I'm near it, it'll attack me, and when I'm not, it won't. That covers the basics of dummy bots. Once you start to pick up the basics, the possibilities really start to open up with what you can do with these bots. Remember that you can basically do anything to a dummy bot that you can normally do to a player. Teleporting, applying statuses, applying knockback, and even making them communicate with the new communication voice lines. Something you can also do is use small messages or HUD text to create dialogue for your bots as I've previously done in the Nepal dungeon. Right now, the only thing that we can't do to dummy bots at the moment is equipping skins, voice lines, or emotes. If you'd like to learn more, check out my workshop tutorial playlist here on my channel. Additionally, you can join my workshop discord to ask questions, interact with other workshop creators and players, and stay up to date on my own workshop creations. Thanks for watching.